Hello everyone, welcome to Arctic Webinar Wednesday. Today we are going to go through a reference case about uh, our quenching device securing a, a drilling platform. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is, uh, is a case where, where we utilize the ultimate arc protection in really extreme conditions. Uh, let's, uh, let's start by going through the, the actual installation where it's done. So the, the base where it's installed is Iceland Innovator in Island Drilling Company in Norway. And uh, the Island Innovator is a, a sixth generation rig for drilling oil on the sea. And, uh, and uh, it has been engaged in this harsh environment since 2013, and it maintains an excellent performance record. Uh, the Iceland Innovator is a floating oil drilling rig positioned with continuous propulsion. And the typical drilling depth is up to 7.5 kilometers. Uh, the electro electrical areas in this ship is, uh, is uh, really small, narrow and cramped. And there is no possibilities for pressure relief channels in the switchgear installed there. So all of these things make this a uh, really extreme condition and an outage in a case like this can be really, really catastrophic. Uh, also, the outage means that because the, the vessel is kept on place during drilling by propulsion, so, so it's quite easy to understand that this is really, really important that it's kept there at all time. Uh, here we see a picture of the actual uh, platform. It's uh, quite an impressive um, surrounding. But before we go deeper into the actual application, let's talk a couple of words about arc, arc flash faults and uh, what is causing them. And uh, here we see quite a typical case. It's a uh, a switch gear. In this case, I think it's a medium voltage switch gear. And uh, we see before and after an arc flash fault. And uh, it's quite easy to see here that, that uh, first of all, uh, the risk is high for any personnel working close to an, to an installation like this. And uh, of course, it means that the outage time will be extremely long as, as the whole switch gear need to be replaced. And uh, <clears throat> an arc flash fault, the causes, there are quite many causes uh, that can actually trigger an arc flash. Uh, like, uh, typically it's human error uh, by mistake leaving a tool in the wrong place on the bus bar or then operating on, for example, on the wrong feeder uh, with the assumption that it's, it's not energized. Uh, some equipment failure is very typical. Uh, lack of maintenance, if, if it's uh, an older switch gear. Some loose connections is very typical. Uh, cable faults, insulation, so on. Dirt com com contamination, contaminations and, uh, and liquids can, can really easily cause something like this. And uh, then, of course, in, in some regions, also animals or, or any other foreign object getting into the switch gear can easily cause an, an arc fault. Basically, basically, of course, it means that, uh, that an arc fault uh, is a flashover between from face to face or from face to ground. If the fault is from face to ground, it typically very easily goes also from face to face and, and becomes a full scale arc flash fault. So in any case, a flash, an arc flash in a system is something to be taken really, really seriously. Okay, and, and uh, today we are going to focus more on the LV application because this reference case is a low voltage uh, switch gear installed on the, on the drilling platform. And uh, first I'm going to show you a typical installation. So here we see a typical LV application. We have two incomers to the bus bar. 
and then we have totally 16 outgoing feeders from the bus bar. On both incomers we have main breakers and, uh, and by the incomers we install the 110 units which also measure the current. And, uh, and the, the main unit, uh, units on the incomers can, can uh, detect both light and current. And then you, you can see on the, on the outgoing feeders then we have installed subunits, in this case 101, and, uh, and uh, sufficient amount of point sensors if, by each feeder to, to detect light in, in any angle or any area of the switchgear. And, uh, and in this case now, if the 110 unit indicates both light and current, then it will trip the breaker. And you see that in this case, we have also inst installed the AQ1000, which is the arc quenching device. So simultaneously wh while tripping the main breaker, it will also trip the quenching device. And by tripping the quenching device, we will limit the arc time to four milliseconds. Uh, without the quenching device, uh, the arc time will be longer due to the de delay in the breaker. So with quenching device, we are talking around four milliseconds. Without quenching device, depending on the breaker and the delay in the breaker, 50 milliseconds or more. So that is the main difference. So a system like this uh, can be installed with or without the quenching device. And then of course the next question is that in which cases the quenching device should be selected. So the first uh, criteria is typically when a current system exceeds 20 kiloamperes, uh, system uh, fault current, short circuit current exceeds 20 kiloamperes. This is a rule of thumb. It can be lower than this depending on the circumstances, type of switchgear and so on. If you have an old switchgear with low or no arc class, we can extend the lifetime of the switchgear with an arc, arc protection system, arc flash protection, and uh, including quenching. If there is no possibilities for pressure ventilation available, uh, then, then typically it's uh, required to limit the arc time possible arc flash time to as short as possible. Uh, of course, one, one very important reason is to maximize personal safety because when we limit the arc time to four milliseconds, there is no risk uh, or, or for personnel or equipment damage in the switchgear. So these are the typical cases in those pictures you see, see examples of, of arcing times in 4 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, and then in 300 milliseconds. And when an arc is burning, the pressure and heat rises so quickly. So, so it's really make a big difference between 4 milliseconds and, and at least 300 milliseconds. Okay, and then if we make a comparison of these systems, different ways of protecting the switchgear. So if I start from the bottom row, a conventional relay. So if we have a switchgear protected by conventional protection relays, uh, for example, overcurrent protection uh, or similar. So of course, then we have a full protection for the, for the system in case of an, an fault, but uh, Typically, a system like this is too slow when we are talking about an arc fault. And, uh, and uh, uh, when, we, when we take in, in, in case a, a normal protection relay, then, then we, we install selectivity and, and the, the actual trip, trip times can be long, 300, 500 milliseconds, which is far too, too much when we are talking about an arc fault. So that's why in most cases and getting more and more common in parallel with the normal protection relays installed an arc flash relay system, arc, arc flash protection system. Uh, and then we have a dedicated uh, protection relay for the arc flash uh, indicating. Uh, so basically 
typically we have two criterions like you could see in the previous uh, system drawing I showed you that we measure the current on the incomer and then we detect the light all over the switch gear and then we we need both criterions to be fulfilled uh, in order to, to, to trip the circuit breaker and, and the quenching device if present. Uh, there are systems also with light only, but, but for full security against fault trips, then, then we recommend to use both, both light and current as criterions when, when, uh, when implementing an arc flash protection system. And uh, then the top of the line is installing the arc quenching uh, system. And then, like mentioned, with, with the arc flash relay, we limit the flash time to 50 somewhere between 50 and 80 milliseconds with the quenching device to 4 milliseconds. And by limiting the arc time to 4 milliseconds, then uh, we keep the energy levels caused by the, by the arc flash in less than 1.2 calories per square centimeters. And uh, in case of a dedicated arc flash system, we still have a very competent system with somewhere between four and eight calories per square centimeters. And then with a conventional protection relay, case of an arc fault, the energy levels are, are much higher. Okay, so this is the comparison between these systems and next I want to go a little bit deeper into the quenching device. So I will show you a video explaining uh, the functionality and the installation of an AQ1000 quenching device. The AQ1000 arc quenching device, the latest protection innovation from ArcTech, the pioneer of arc flash protection. Active arc quenching is the most exciting new solution for improving personal safety, maximizing asset reliability, and minimizing downtime. The AQ1000 can be applied to protect any system with up to 100 kiloamper and 690 volt rated equipment. The arc quenching device is bolted to the bus bars in the most practical location, typically close to the main circuit breaker. The AQ-1000 adds to the well-proven AQ-100 arc flash protection system. The AQ-100 system senses the arc and initiates rapid arc quenching sequence, creating a controlled low impedance path, transferring arc fault current to the quenching device. All this occurs in less than four milliseconds. Arcing faults often lead to catastrophic consequences. By maintaining the arc time in less than four milliseconds, the AQ-1000 mitigates switchgear damages and minimizes the process downtime and may save human lives. The AQ-1000 operation is based on patented and dependable Thompson coil technology. The bulletproof mechanism operating time is as little as two milliseconds. The use of Thompson coil technology makes the AQ-1000 fully reusable and testable. The system can be conveniently reset after factory or site testing. Embedded electronics provide for full system self-supervision and operator status indications. The quenching device reusability and onboard supervision features raise the bar on system reliability to a new level offering guaranteed peace of mind by the ultimate personal safety and return on investment in a single operation in plant lifetime. Less than four milliseconds arcing time keeps incident energy levels in less than 1.2 calories per centimeter squared, according to IEEE 1584. 
AQ-1000 Dark Quenching Device, tested and approved according to latest UL and IEC standards. Arctic, the pioneer. Okay, so there you saw the, the functionality of the AQ-1000. Let me, let me just go through a few of the main advantages still. So, like mentioned in the video, the AQ-1000 is currently the only resettable AQD on the market. So, so the, it means that the quenching device can be, be re-energized uh, in a few minutes after, after taking care of an arc flash incident. And uh, one big uh, advantage with uh, with the AQ-1000 is that uh, it can take uh, up to 100 mechanical operations, so it's possible to test during commissioning. And this is also an, an functionality that uh, differentiates the AQ-1000 from the other devices on the market. It's a fully supervised system and, uh, and whatever happens there, so there will be an alarm in case of, of some, some uh, uh, unwanted functionality in the device. Uh, the device is, uh, is of course fully tested and certified according to the latest IEC standards and also we have a marine approval by Lloyds. Okay, after this we can we can go a little bit deeper into the actual system in this reference case which we are are showing today so when we talk about uh, the island innovator uh, oil rig and platform so there is an existing switch gear so we are talking about a retrofit installation the switch gear is around 10 years old and uh, the reason for this new installation is to reduce the arc energy levels in case of an arc failure in the switch gear and uh, and uh, the calculated arc energy in the switch gear on board the rig exceeded the set safety norms so so there was a need to do something and uh, then by introducing the arc protection system including the quenching device uh, it uh, it uh, improved or, or lowered the arc flash energy and uh, in at the same time it also lowered the requirement for PPE personal protective equipment so so it's uh, possible to work with the switch gear with uh, with a lower level of, of personal protective equipment than previously and uh, and also by this new uh, installation of the new system then then the energy arc flash energy levels was reduced significantly below the minimum requirements and uh, the system component so there is an aq 110 plv installed by the incomers in the system so detecting both light and current uh, then the, there are subunits aq 102 lv in the previous typical system I showed you, there were uh, uh, point sensors. In this system, we have a mixture of, uh, of light detecting uh, sensor fibers and point sensors. You will see la later in the, in the system picture. And then by each incomer, an AQ-1000 quenching device installed. Okay, let's take a look at the actual installation. So here we see all the components as, as mentioned previously. You can see that, uh, that the main breaker is controlled by the, by the AQ110 and also by the main breaker we have a dedicated uh, point sensor uh, protecting that area. The rest of the bus bar is detected by an uh, 
and uh, light sensor fiber which is circulating the switch gear so it's it's set up like this and now in case we have an arc fault somewhere in the on the bus bar on a feeder or the incomer then it's detected in this case by the aq102 and the light sensing fiber it sends the signal to 110 at the same time the 110 is uh, indicating and detecting a fault current on the incoming so now we have have the two criterions fulfilled so it means that the 110 will then indicate a trip and uh, and uh, for the breaker and also the quenching device simultaneously so it means that the the command for for Closing the AQ1000 and the breaker goes at the same time and uh, the AQ1000 will execute in less than 4 milliseconds and then actually absorb the energy caused by the arc fault for the time of the breaker to open. So the, the AQ1000 is able to absorb the energy from the caused by the arc flash uh, by the time the breaker has opened. Okay, and this, uh, this is just one part of the system. So there are seven pretty much similar setups over the whole single line of the system. So here you can see an overview of the full system. And, uh, and in this way, then we protect the whole switch gear, the whole, whole setup with the AQ100 arc protection system. Okay, to finish up the, the presentation, I would like to still take an, an over, overview of the outcome and the advantages of this new installation. So of course, number one question, we are talking about uh, an, an working area, which is uh, very compact. And we are also talking about uh, electrical supply, which is very, very critical. So the safe working conditions for personnel is, is uh, really important. And it's, it takes a, a high level of, of protection system to achieve this. Uh, and then, of course, it's very important that minimum or non damage is caused by an arc fault. So it means that uh, that even in case of an arc fault, it's possible to, to re-engage the switch gear in, in a few minutes. So we are talking about a really short outage time, which is crucial in a case like this. And also the working conditions are easier, lowered need for personal protective equipment. That is also making quite a, quite a big difference when we are talking about the daily work, work maintaining and, and uh, working with the switch gear. Okay, thank you very much for, for, this, uh, for watching this, this webinar. Uh, I will be answering your questions still a few minutes after this, uh, this webinar ends. And uh, please enter a question in chat if, you, if it's something you are thinking about and I will contact you and reply to you straight away. Thank you very much. Bye.